Good morning and welcome to Birchcliff Bluffs United Church on this beautiful Sunday morning. Our service is printed for us and we follow sharing the readings. Our call to worship says, This is the day that God has made. Let, Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day we join our hearts in prayer and praise. Let us worship God together. We are going to stand and sing the opening hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy. ceremony and relationship that are etched in footprints, fire, and faithfulness on the soil and rock that surrounds us. As we light this candle, may God kindle a flame in our hearts that the glow might touch those whom we meet. We say together, let this light illumine our path so that we might know the hope found in living the way God intended us to live. We join in our opening prayer. You call us, O God, as you called to people long ago. You continue to seek to influence us that we might be in relationship with you so that the world can be transformed by your love and grace, working in us and through us. Help us, Help us to be open to your call in all circumstances of our lives. Amen. Amen. 
Now we're going to beep bop a little bit as we sing our second hymn, Praise Our Maker. to silence the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are humans that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? Yet you have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands, you have put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Our second reading is from the Gospel, John 16, verses 12 to 15. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Let us begin with the word of prayer. Gracious and loving Creator, may the words of my mouth, coupled with the meditation of each one of our hearts, be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Kay was teaching first grade in a large elementary school. One morning, all of the teachers were called to the teacher's room for an emergency meeting. They hurried over, leaving their classrooms unsupervised. Every one of the teachers was worried, but none as much as Kay, because her class of first graders was especially mischievous and unruly. When they got to the teacher's room, Kay said, I think I better listen in and find out what's going on in my classroom. She turned on the intercom, and sure enough, her room was in chaos. Children were yelling and jumping and throwing things. 
but one little voice shrieked out above all the rest of the uproar. Kay recognized that piercing voice. She picked up the microphone and in her sternest voice said, Elizabeth, sit down. Immediately, the room fell silent. After a few seconds, a small voice mumbled, Okay, God. <laughs> Grade one, okay, God. What do you know about God and God's purpose and participation in your life? You are more sophisticated than Elizabeth, but what do you really know? One of the ways I like to explain the Trinity is to think of your home and a three-way light bulb. The three-way bulb was the first attempt at moonlighting, they called it. One light bulb could be switched on three different levels of intensity, changing the amount of light it cast over the room. Trying to read? Click the bulb up to 150 watts. Just want to sit around and talk? Click it down to 100 watts. Want to snuggle with your sweetie? Click it all the way down to 50 watts. One light bulb, but three different experiences of the light it produced. Today is known as Trinity Sunday. This is the day Christians around the world take time to consider one of the greatest doctrines of our faith the magnificence and the mystery of divinity that is three in one, known by Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now, if you know any church history at all, you'll realize that the Trinity <coughs> oh, my, excuse me, has been one of the thorniest thickets, one of the trickiest subjects in the history of Christianity. <coughs> its elaboration has been complex, a theological construct hashed out by theologians and church elders centuries ago, and yet still argued, argued over every few decades. Augustine, while puzzling over the doctrine of the Trinity, was walking along a beach one day. He observed a young boy with a bucket running back and forth to pour water into a hole. Augustine asked the boy, what are you doing? The child replied, I'm trying to put the ocean into this hole. Augustine said it was then he realized that he'd been trying to put an infinite God into this finite mind. The truth. How do we know it when we hear it? Pontius Pilate once looked at his wife and said, what is truth? It's a question that plagues everyone who tries to do the right thing, who tries to live above board, who struggles with all the complexities of life. Jesus looks at his followers and he says, I have much more to say to you, more than I could possibly say to you now under the circumstances. But when the Holy Spirit comes, he will guide you into all truth. Scripture now has our attention. The Holy Spirit will come and guide us into all truth. How do you ever find firm ground to stand on over an issue? First, we're told you find through the Spirit who says Jesus is the Spirit of truth. It is the job of the Holy Spirit to point to the truth, to guide us to truth. An illustration for you. A pastor starts each of his confirmation classes with a jar full of beans. He asked his students to guess how many beans are in the jar, and on a big pad of paper writes down their estimates. Next to those estimates, he helps them make another list 
their favorite songs. When the lists are complete, he reveals the actual number of beans in the jar. The whole class looks over their guesses to see whose estimate was closest to being right. Then they turn to the list of favorite songs. The pastor asks them, which of these songs is closest to being right? The students protest that there is no right answer. A person's favorite song is purely a matter of taste. The pastor tells the children, when you decide what to believe in terms of your faith, it is more like guessing the number of beans than choosing your favorite song. Always, from old as well as young, he gets the same answer. Choosing one's faith is more like choosing a favorite song. The pastor looks at them and says, is that right? When you decide what to believe in terms of your faith, is it more like guessing the number of beans in a jar or choosing your favorite song? He tells them one more time, in no uncertain terms, that faith is like guessing how many beans there are in a jar. Faith is certain. It is not vague. It is not a matter of opinion. It may not matter how you were baptized, whether you were sprinkled or dunked, but it matters that you were baptized. It may not matter your denomination, you know, the church or other, but it matters whether you call yourself a Christian. It matters how many jelly beans are in the jar. Why? Because I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting, our creed. That's how many jelly beans there are. A pilot flying a fighter jet in bad weather and about to make his instrument approach to an airport got a message. The air traffic controller called and asked how much fuel he had. Oh, I have plenty, he said. Well, said the controller, we have a little problem. There's a young pilot who is not instrument rated. He's lost in the clouds and we're wondering if you could intercept him and lead him back to the airport. Sure, the pilot responded. He found the lost plane, pulled up beside it. He called on the radio and told the pilot to look out to his left. There, the pilot of the small plane saw the powerful fighter jet, and he burst into tears. As far as he was concerned, at that point, he thought his life was about over. He would soon run out of fuel and crash. Don't worry, the test pilot said, everything's going to be okay. I'm going to pull in front of you several hundred yards. Do everything I do. When I turn, I'll turn gently. All you have to do is exactly what I do. So carefully, the leader and the follower turned on course to the airport and slowly descended. When they finally broke through the clouds at 500 feet, the fighter pilot saw the most beautiful sight. There in front of him was the runaway, runway, and he was perfectly set up to land with the young man behind him. That story spoke to me today, folks, because I think there's times when we too need a guide that we can depend on to show us the way. I mean, think about your life. Where would we be without mentors, coaches, counselors, consultants? How would we come to conclusions when we're engaged in tasks that are beyond our expertise without someone to guide us? The spirit of truth will set you free. We say that to our children multiple times when they're young and growing up. It's one of the greatest concepts of Jesus' teaching. But unfortunately, for some, there is a requirement. When you have found the truth, you have to stand in that truth. It's not enough to know what the truth is. 
you must act upon it. Many of us confronted with an issue know what is the right thing to do. The question is, will we act on what we know is true? Two gentlemen were having an argument. To settle the matter, they went to a judge for arbitration. The plaintiff made his case. He was very eloquent and persuasive in his reasoning. When he finished, the judge nodded and said, that's right, that's right. On hearing this, the defendant jumped up and said, wait a second, judge, you haven't even heard my side of the case yet. So the judge told the defendant to state his case. And he too was very persuasive and eloquent. When he finished, the judge said, that's right, that's right. When the clerk of the court heard this, he jumped up and said, judge, they can't both be right. The judge looked at the clerk of the court and said, that's right, that's right. There are three difficulties with truth. The first is to find it. The second is to act upon it. And the third is to speak it. Christians are called bearers of all truth. We declare Jesus is not our way, Jesus is the way. Christ is not, as Mohammed said, a prophet. He is God incarnate. God did not send a representative to earth. He sent his only son. It may sound arrogant to those outside the church, but we can do nothing less. We are under oath. We are followers bound by what we have heard the Spirit reveal to our hearts. And then we're obligated to speak it to the world. Did you know that when a large ship enters a harbor, it takes on board what is called a harbor master? This is a man who knows that harbor. He knows the length of it. He knows the depth of it. He knows where the hazards are. He knows where the tides and currents are. He knows the direction they flow in and how strong they are. When that harbor master comes on board, he takes control of the ship and gives orders to the captain who steers the ship. He is an outside expert who is brought in to make sure the ship docks safely. We're like that ship, friends. As we sail the sea of life, we have been given a harbor master known to us as the Holy Spirit. He knows the currents, the tides, the hazards, and the flow. If you will let him guide the ship of your life, he will guide you safely through the hazards of earth, right into the harbor of heaven, because he is the only guide you need. I close with a lovely story about a great theologian known as Karl Barth, who was on a speaking tour of colleges across this country. Dr. Bart was drawing huge crowds to hear his very complex answers to the questions of life. Speaking at a prominent university, the Great Hall was packed with faculty, students, and visitors who came to hear Karl Barth speak. During the question and answer period, one student asked, Dr. Barth, may I ask you a very personal question? Dr. Bart smiled and said, yes, you may ask anything. The student then asked, Dr. Bart, you are a very well-educated man. What is the greatest truth you have ever learned? Dr. Bart bowed his head, thought for a moment about how he would respond. Then he raised his head, looked out at the student who had asked the question, and he said, the greatest truth I ever learned was at my mother's knee. Jesus loves me, this I know, and the Bible tells me so. The secret of effective living, friends, is to discover the truth about Jesus the Christ. When we focus on him, we discover that truth is a caring love. Truth is the word become flesh. Truth is experiencing his life-giving power. Truth is discovering his love with arms outstretched to embrace us. 
we're called to feel that love flowing down toward us. And then if we are brave enough, we step into his embrace and we are one with the spirit. Let those who hear understand the word of God as it comes this day and apply it in their daily living. Amen. And now, Randy, we're going to sing again. We're going to stand and sing God through his almighty word. Sundays from now, and uh, this month's theme is going to be all about campfire songs and songs we learned as kids going to camp, whether it was Christian camp or, or otherwise. It was all, oddly enough, there's a lot of crossover. I remember going to scout camps and learning songs about Noah and, and uh, Jesus and Abraham, so we're going to be celebrating those as we kick off uh, the summer season, so please come along. It will be a lot of fun. Perhaps, uh, will the board allow me to have a campfire in the middle of the floor? <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's two Sundays from now, June 26th. I'd like to remind everyone that after Campfire Sunday, and not because of it, it's going to be good, but we do not meet in person in July and August. The month of July, there will be no services from Birchcliffe Bluffs United Church. You're invited to go and experience other congregations that you've often wondered about. <coughs> In August, the middle three weeks of August, we will have online services. There will be no service from Birchcliffe Bluffs United Church on Labor Day weekend but we're coming back the second Sunday of September full of vim and vigor. And so hopefully by then, uh, mass won't be mandatory. So just keep all that in mind. Are there any other announcements that should be shared at this time? Oh good, we're all ready for summer already. <laughs> How privileged we are that the Creator God asks us to bring Help, life, hope, peace, justice into reality. Our offerings have been received with thanks. Let us take a moment to bow our heads in prayer. 
Gracious God, today we want to say thank you for all the wonderful things that lift our spirits up. Music and song, sun and rain, family and friends, community relationships. Help us to remember those who lift us up, especially we think of fathers who play an important role in our lives. We are thankful for the gift of being together and the love we share. Loving God, we now take a moment to remember those who are near and dear to us as we lift them up in prayer. God, there are so many that we'd like to lift up to you, and we ask that you hear what each one of our hearts has offered and come and let those we have named feel the gift of your presence at this time. We ask through this through Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now we're going to uh, stand and sing our closing hymn, it's a song of praise to the maker. Sings high in the tree. 
message of love and new life. Go and proclaim God with all that you have. We go knowing we are not alone. God goes with us. Amen. Thank you.